My name is Dr. Jeff Werber, Chief Veterinary Officer of AirVet, practicing veterinarian. And what we're gonna talk about today is when is the right time to say goodbye? There are so many signs when it comes to the end of life, as we like to call it. First of all, eating is key. I mean, when a dog stops eating, that's a very serious problem. And you try, you can use appetite stimulants, you can try to get them to, to give them their favorite foods. The last we want is for a dog to starve. Do they still get excited? When you come home from work or, or from school, do they jump up? Do they see you? Can they even get up? Can they, can they go to the bathroom? Are they defecating and urinating all over themselves? Here's a really good question to think about. Are they living or are they just existing? When it comes to how to, to tell whether your pet's in pain, it's an inability, an unwillingness to wanna to move. Sometimes they'll actually just cry out or they'll try to move and you'll hear a yelp, you'll hear a scream. And there are many conditions that we see with aging pets that are painful. And sadly, there are many that aren't that painful. So it is clearly one of the symptoms, but don't wait to say, well, God, he's not crying in pain, he must be fine. No, that's why we have to look at many different criteria to make that decision. So the right time to say goodbye is when you actually have made the decision based on these criteria, whether they're happy, whether they're eating, whether they, they're able to move, uh, whether they're living or just existing. When you look at your own dog and you actually feel sorry for him or her, then it's probably time. If it were grandma, would you be thinking of full-time nursing care or hospice? Then it's probably time. So when it comes to hospice care, it's a matter of relieving discomfort, pain, feeding them either parentally, you know, through IVs or, or force feeding them or a stomach tube, something that we can do to keep their nutrition up. But when we approach hospice in dogs, it's just for a very temporary fix. But usually when we do hospice in veterinary medicine, it's more because one of the family members is away in a different state, maybe away at school, and you just want to keep them comfortable, load them up with medication and fluids, just to where everybody can come and be together to say goodbye. But we're not looking for long term because we know that dogs aren't programmed to live the long lives that we can. It is very difficult when I talk about grief, even though you know you're doing the right thing, it's, it's never easy. It's never easy for me and I've had countless pets over the years, I have 10 right now. And I know the time is coming, my oldest cat is, is 15. Don't think about, oh, woe is me. Think about the beauty of what you are doing now, how you can help your pet, how you can help the pet transition, and know that it's gonna be a challenge and reminisce. This is what I tell people, to help with the process. Get another pet. Inevitably, that new pet is gonna be a, an expression, a behavior, a vocalization, something, and you're gonna to say to yourself, oh my God, Bowser used to do that. It's a great way to always, always remember your past pets. Plus, it brings warmth to your heart. It helps with the grief. The phases of grief are there, and there's gonna be denial, and there's gonna be doubt, and of, of course, sorrow. But know that it will pass. And as I said, don't wait too long before you fill that void with another happy puppy.